Hello, I greet you, and I greet you in the presence of the Most Holy Trinity, of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. In my last episode on St. John Bosco, I said that Giovanni Bosco had decided to join a Franciscan order in order to live in a convent, and there he would study, pray, and do his duties well. He didn't want to become a priest because, according to him, at least he thought, that the world was full of dangers for the, his spiritual life. He said that a priest would find himself in a number of occasions of sin, and so it was very easy for a priest to fall into sin and lose God's grace. While a friar in a convent would have fewer occasions of sin, and so he could lead a priestly life according to the heart of Jesus. In order to enter with the Franciscan friars, who were in Chieri, he needed to sit for an examination. And for this examination, he was expected to follow a course of studies that lasted about a year. He followed the course and sat for the said examination as well. And he did very well in it. Imagine the mind and the intelligence and the brightness of St. John Bosco. In order to enter that religious order, he further had to get from the parish priest of Castelnuovo d'Asti some documents. So he went to the parish priest, Don Bartolomeo d'Assano, to get these documents. The parish priest, of course, gave him the said documents. But the parish priest remained stunned by the fact that Giovanni Bosco had asked him for those documents without telling him the reason for them. So it was something to be expected for the parish priest to ask him for the reason behind those documents. And Giovanni was sincere, but he also told him that he had not yet told his mother, Mamma Margherita, about his intention to join that religious order. The parish priest of Castello of Odasti waited for some time to pass to see if Giovanni Bosco would change his mind or not on joining the Franciscan friars. After a couple of weeks, he thought it would be better and prudent to tell Giovanni's mother about Giovanni's intentions regarding his future vocation. So one day in December, after lunch, he visited Margarita at her home to speak to her about her son's priestly vocation. Among other things, he told her that in their diocese there was a great shortage of priests to carry out the great pastoral work needed. So the parish priest greatly desired that Giovanni Bosco, instead of joining the religious order he intended to do, would enter the seminary to become a priest, and thus he would be in charge of some parish. He told her that he was aware of how holy and intelligent Giovanni Bosco was, and he knew that her son had many talents, among which also some extraordinary ones too. And with all those good qualities, Giovanni could succeed to be a very good priest and carry out a fruitful pastoral work. In the end, the parish priest told Margarita to do her best to persuade Giovanni to completely remove from his mind the idea of becoming a friar and instead decide to become a priest and enter the seminary instead of the convent. And to persuade her even more, he told her, I know you are a poor woman, you are growing in age, and in the near future you won't be able to work anymore. If your son joins the religious order, 
How can he help you in your future needs? That's why I have come here today for your own good as well. Margarita thanked the parish priest Don Bartolomeo d'Assano for the interest and concern about her and her son's priestly vocation. But she didn't tell him what her mind was on the question of her son's priestly vocation, nor that she didn't want to interfere in Giovanni's future vocation, but she remained impressed by the parish priest's words and wanted to convey those words precisely to her son Giovanni. Therefore, as soon as the parish priest left, she hurried to Chiari and met Giovanni. She smilingly told him, the parish priest has come to my house this afternoon and told me that you desire to become a Franciscan friar. Is this true? And Giovanni answered her and said, yes, mamma, I would like to become a Franciscan friar. I think you aren't against my becoming a Franciscan friar, are you? And Margarita replied, I would like you to examine well the steps you are going to take. Then follow your vocation without being influenced by anyone. The most important thing is the salvation of your soul. The parish priest wants you to think it over and change your decision. And instead of a Franciscan friar, you become a priest so that you can help me as well when I grow old. But I tell you, in these things I don't interfere because we need to place God first and foremost in our lives. Don't worry about me. From you, I want nothing and expect nothing. Be always good, as God wants you to be. I have been born poor, lived poor and want to die poor. And I further tell you that if you become a priest and be rich, I will never come and see you. Remember well the very words that I am telling you now. Don Bosco continued to remember those words all his life until he left for eternity at the age of 72. And sometimes he echoed them to some people with tears in his eyes. But the Lord God saw Mamma Margarita's sincerity and did not want her to be separated from her son Giovanni. Rather, he wanted Margarita to be of a great help in the setting up of the oratory of St. Francis de Sal, that later on Don Bosco opened in the zone of Valdocco, Turin. In the meantime, no one in care knew what was passing in Giovanni Bosco's mind at that time. As a matter of fact, Giovanni proceeded with his studies, as before, continued to meet his friends, bringing joy and happiness to everyone. But no one knew how doubtful Giovanni Bosco was about his future. Giovanni Bosco lived in poverty to buy food, copybooks and books, and pay the school fee. He had to stay begging people to help him. His mother Margarita did the same. When she didn't have enough money to buy what she needed, she approached some well-to-do people or persons who somehow could help her and borrowed money or asked them for some wheat or similar food. Don Giovanni Turkey remembered how his father used to say that he also helped Margarita in her poverty and Giovanni Bosco was always resigned to God's will, happily, because he was convinced that the Lord God would somehow provide him with whatever he would need. He always wore a happy smiling face. Whoever met him or saw him did not know through what Giovanni Bosco was passing. On account of his poverty, during the day he would end up eating very little. One day, during his holidays, Giovanni wanted to feed himself more than usual. From their field, his family had picked a large quantity of figs, so he wanted to buy a loaf so that he could eat bread with figs. 
There and then he hurried to buy the loaf. On his way back, he met with his friends, who were playing bowls in St. Anthony's Square. As he was there standing, watching them playing, he unconsciously started nibbling the loaf, little by little, on account of his hunger. After nibbling here and nibbling there, over and over again, the loaf finished. When his friends ended playing, Giovanni Bosco remembered that at home he had figs, but all of a sudden he realized that the loaf he had bought somehow disappeared from his hands, so he began to look for it here and there, but couldn't find it. Then he started to ask his friends if they knew where his loaf was, because he thought that some friend of his might have hid it as a joke. One said, I haven't seen your loaf. Another one said, I didn't take your loaf. Then Giovanni asked another youth about his loaf. This youth told him, what are you looking for? You have eaten the loaf yourself while you were watching us playing. I saw you nibbling it myself and I was astonished how you succeeded in eating it all, that big loaf you had in your hands. Giovanni Bosco burst out laughing and convinced himself that no one had taken his loaf, but he had eaten it all by himself on account of his great hunger. So he went back home and had a feast with the figs. Thus Giovanni Bosco went hungry for days because he had nothing to eat. All his friends agreed that Giovanni didn't eat enough. Giuseppe Blanchard, among others, often had bread and fruit and shared it with Giovanni Bosco. Blanchard told him, here, Giovanni, take and eat, because this food is very good for you. Giuseppe Blanchard's brother, Leandro, complained with his mother about his brother, who took the biggest chestnuts from the table to give them to Giovanni Bosco. But his mother just smiled at him. Since she was a fruit seller, sometimes she chose the best apple she had, gave it to her son Giuseppe and told him, go and give this apple to Giovanni Bosco. Giovanni is a holy young man and will surely pray for us. Sometimes Giovanni Bosco told his friend Giuseppe Blanchard to keep his food to himself and desist from sharing it with him. But Giuseppe lovingly insisted that Giovanni take it, almost forcing him to do so. Giuseppe Blanchard grew well in age and in the year 1876, 1876, Giuseppe Blanchard said the following words. Although decades of years have passed, Don Bosco didn't forget me. He was not ashamed to mention the little food I used to give him when he was still a young man and was in need of it. I haven't seen Giovanni Bosco for ages, and if I were to meet him, I wouldn't dare greet him and approach him because I think he wouldn't recognize me but how mistaken I was. One day, while I was carrying some food in one hand and a bottle of wine in the other, I met Don Bosco in Chieri. Then Giovanni Bosco was already a priest and had opened the oratory in Turin and was known as Don Bosco. So, after many years, unexpectedly, I met Don Bosco in Chieri. He was surrounded by a number of priests, and all these priests came to greet him while he was standing on the threshold of the house Bertinetti, where he lived in those days in Chieri. As soon as he saw me, he left everyone and came to greet me. He exclaimed, Oh, Blanchard, how are you? And I answered him, Very well, thank you, Mr. Knight. And Don Bosco asked me, why are you calling me knight? Why are you honoring me so much? 
I am just the poor Don Bosco, without titles and nothing more. And I told him, excuse me, but I thought you must have received some great honor or achieved something significant when I am seeing you surrounded by so many priests. And Blanchard continued to narrate. I tried to cut our meeting early because I was not dressed appropriately and had the food for lunch in my hands. And I didn't dare continue to talk to him the way I was then and in the presence of so many priests who were greeting him warmly. I thought to myself that Don Bosco must have become a famous figure or achieved a high position. But Don Bosco asked me, don't you like priests? And I answered him, of course I like them. But the way I am dressed now, I don't dare remain here. And Don Bosco told me, dear Blanchard, I still remember the time when I was a student in Kerry and you have often fed me when I had nothing to eat. You were in God's providence then, one of the first benefactor of poor Don Bosco. And then he turned towards the priest and said, while pointing his hand towards me, gentlemen, this is one of my first benefactors. Then he started telling them the food I used to give him when he was hungry. And then he turned to me and told me, are you seeing how much I remember the good you did to me? And after shaking my hand, he told me, if one day you are in Turin, come and have lunch with me. Ten years later, in the year 1886, so it was two years before Don Bosco's departure into eternity, in 1886, I, Blanchard is narrating, I heard that Don Bosco was sick. And so I went to Turin, at the oratory of Aldocco, on purpose to see him. As soon as the doorkeeper saw me stepping in the oratory, he stopped me and asked me what I desired. I told him I wanted to see Don Bosco, but the doorkeeper told me, today you can't see Don Bosco. And I asked him, but Don Bosco is here or somewhere else? And he answered me, yes, he is here, but today he is not seeing anyone because he is sick. And I answered him, it doesn't matter, Don Bosco wants to see me because he told me many times to come here and talk to him. And the doorkeeper told me, well, come another day. Today I can't let anyone go in and talk to him. This is the order I have from my superiors and this order is for all visitors. With great courage I told him, yes, the order is for all visitors, except for me, who has been a great friend of his since his childhood. Don't give me this great disappointment that I came here and won't see Don Bosco. It's more reasonable that I see him now since he is sick. Here the doorkeeper gave up, phoned up someone who was near Don Bosco and told him that at the entrance door there was a stranger who wanted to visit Don Bosco. The answer was a positive one. I was allowed to enter. I went up on the first floor. And as soon as I almost arrived near Don Bosco's door, I had to face the secretary and ask him to let me see Don Bosco. The secretary told me, I can't let you in to see him. I first need to get permission from Don Rua. But there and then Don Bosco opened the door of his room because he recognized me from my voice and came to save me from all those troublesome moments that I had to face in order to speak to him. We shook hands and then he led me into his room. We both sat down near each other and started talking like two great friends. Don Bosco asked me about my health, work and family. Then he told me that we have known each other for many years. With a strong voice, he told me, 
I got old, but I don't forget all the good you did for me when I was a student in Kerry. I shall pray for you, and you don't forget the poor Don Bosco. After half an hour, I saw that Don Bosco was very tired and needed some rest, perhaps to sleep. So I intended to leave him. But as soon as I stepped out of his room, Don Bosco called someone and told him to take me down to the refectory for lunch. Since on that day, Don Bosco couldn't go down because he was still sick, he told the one who guided me down to the refectory to place me at table in the same place where Don Bosco used to stay, that is, in the middle of all superiors. Thank you for listening. You who are listening and me, one day in heaven together shall be, also with St. John Bosco, but by the power of God's grace.